Like, look, look at this dog, dude. I think I'm going to give her a treat. I have to. I hope that registered as like being calm and being a good girl that I hope that registered as like the right thing to do in her mind. You know what I mean? She's like, what am I doing right now that deserves praise? Oh, just being a f***ing cutie and a patootie. Make a zero tax city a challenge I have long avoided since it looked implausible. Thanks to uncom con unconventional modern fiscal strategies. Now you can have a city that simply doesn't tax its population. Tried to build the city with zero percent tax in cities' skylines. It's not a big secret that no one likes paying taxes, and some people think that if we just charge people only for the public services they chose to use, we could create a more fair, just taxation system in our country. It sounds good. So I set out with the intention of seeing if this would be possible in a simulation with a basic starter city in cities' skylines. Let's start at square one. Normally in city skylines, the lowest you can drop taxes in a standard game is 1%. I think it's against the spirit of the challenge to allow even that. So we're going to open our handy dandy policy based tax menu to drop the taxes in every sector. Except industrial, which isn't allowed for some reason. And that'll get our entire city's taxes down to a true 0%. Done. So before we've begun, we've set out the foundations in our- I love this concept so much. This is brilliant. Policies for a 0% tax city. Now funding okay. it is going to be a whole different project. We need some default starting cap. I was about to say, yeah, how do you, how do you initiate the starting capital to like build the city without any taxes whatsoever, including roads and stuff? Not to be like too much of a uh, actually kind of guy, but- Capital or we won't be able to build anything. $500,000. With absolutely nothing in our city, aside from the interstate entryway ramp, we are neither gaining nor losing money. Entry highway maintenance costs are subsidized by the state, so that's out of our fiscal hands. But from the moment we lay our first roads, it's going to be very expensive to grow and maintain our- See, this is what I mean, like, even- uh, Obviously, this is a satirical, you know, this is a video that is, like, supposed to prove that point, and, and they are proving that point. They're going to prove the point that it doesn't work, right? But, like- even in this circumstance, even in this circumstance, like there's so much amenities and public infrastructure that uh, that is a given that you like get for either free. But like the reality is it's the state that paid for it, it's the taxes that paid for in our it. city. So we need to plan ahead. Cash flows don't manage themselves. And if we run out of money, the challenge is over. Let's start with first things first. Every city needs power, water and roads. When we start building roads for our homes, they're going to be very pricey to maintain. Since we don't want to charge people, we'll quickly run out of money. So we can kiss all traditional ideas of building up a normal city goodbye. The first city I built relied upon tourism to secure public funding. There were tolls to enter and exit the city, and they were making tens of dollars from travelers just at the gates alone. Once they entered the town, the strategy was that once we had them trapped inside, we'd rake in the dough from using popular tourist locations, such as our hot air balloon rental service, as well as our seaside restaurant, fishing pier, and jet ski ride pavilion. On paper, the plan was foolproof, but in execution, the lack of a fire department, police force, healthcare, and corpse disposal services meant that the few dollars we had each month went toward barely securing enough water and power for the city to operate. Crime was rampant. People got sick and just died. Then leftover human corpses filled up the restaurant and the other tourist sites, making them unattractive venues for visitors. And the hot air balloon riders just flew off and away into the sky. There wasn't really any way to enforce that. Without any tourism or anyone entering the city anymore, all the homes were abandoned, everyone just left, and the city went deep into the red as crime and fire spread. In a word, 
Yeah, I don't think this guy understands. Like, uh, that's a libertarian paradise, okay? And Kapistan, it just works. Even when it doesn't work, it works. Guess what? I bet the age of consent was very low. Uh, it was zero, and therefore probably paradise. Word, it failed. So I decided to cut my losses and just try again. I had learned lots from this first city, and I could use it to build the second one the right way. The second city. After the first one failed, I saved my progress and started fresh. If tourism didn't work, what could be the answer? I decided that the tolls in the first city were a pretty good idea. So I can- This literally happened in Grafton, New Hampshire? Yes. Uh, Grafton, New Hampshire, uh, there was a book written about this exact city. Uh, tried to do this literal thing. And uh, they had such a gigantic bear problem that they could not deal with that. Like the bears basically started running the damn show. Those at the only entrance to the town. Since this was literally the only thing that was working for me, I decided to find a way to force them to pay tolls at every possible turn to try to squeeze as much cash as I possibly could out of the population. Even if it was trivial and inconvenient, like putting all of the residential areas on one side of the river, and then all the commercial and office zones on the other side of the river, connected only by a very narrow bridge and an expensive toll booth. This nearly worked if it weren't for the fact that almost everyone in the town was uneducated and too stupid to work in an office building. We tried funding elementary schools with the meager profits from the few people who were smart enough to work in an office. But this town also unfortunately ended in a downward taxation spiral, which concluded with all the familiar sights and sounds of dead people, abandoned buildings, and men in balaclavas up to no good. The third city. They say the third time's the charm. Surely with all the failures from the first two dumpster fires, we can now put something together. And we did. The third city was the first city that was architecturally attractive and had a sensible plan for funding. Now we had toll booths not only at the entrance, but also just kind of nearby the town to suck the maximum amount of money from anyone who came anywhere remotely close to our borders. An attractive layout with a grid of four spherical neighborhoods for residential, commercial, industrial, and corporate buildings. Not only were we able to max out the tolls for passing between neighborhoods, but we were also able to maximize the effective radius. Bro made Florida. Like he literally remade Florida, dog. That's so funny. This is like, add on the reality that it's also sinking every year into the water and you have florida but its population also unfortunately suffered from a catastrophic downward spiral after everyone's jobs were erased along with the industrial district by the great fire of august 2023 okay so that didn't work but the fourth city as along with pnc we also do crop and livestock insurance which is facing similar issues but unlike florida usda helps farmers and ranchers with setting the price and safeguarding against part of the losses but with climate change, the last few years, our subsidiary operated in severe losses thanks to climate change. Yep. This is where everything really started coming together. I hadn't failed. I had just not succeeded three times in a row. Now, not only did we have the tolls nearby, into, and just around the town, but now we began experimenting with a new way of making money. That is, erecting an expensive amusement park between the residential zone and the rest- Literally Florida. The ultimate goal of like libertarian paradise is building Florida, except city skylines probably doesn't have like maximum weather conditions. I've never played it, but like this is Florida, but with like extreme weather conditions maxed out and it's like constant, consistently sinking. Okay. Rest of the city where all the jobs and services were located. It was not a good amusement park. It was just a path between two entrances. That is to say, there was nothing amusing about it. But it became growingly profitable, so much to the point that I decided to make more of them. And then make them even shorter so that people would have to pay for multiple amusement parks containing just more paths if they wanted to get to work. Still in the red. At this point in time, I decided that the traditional asphalt roads were becoming too expensive to maintain. And so I used my resources to replace them all with- For the record, I don't think this guy's a libertarian. He's making fun of, like, libertarian end cap policies in, like, city buildings. Much less expensive dirt roads. At long last, our city was finally breaking even. 
Just kidding, it actually wasn't. It took until the fifth city for it to really break even. But who truly knows after I tried to sort through all the save files I named badly. The point is, this time we had fires, crime, dead bodies, and garbage all covered by funding from a gamut of four amusement parks all in a row. Broad Park, Groveland, Fun World, and who could forget Belmont Experience, where people fought every morning over not enough parking spots to allow the peaceful passage of pedestrian foot traffic through one park, across, or rather around the street, across the next park, around another street, and then all over again, then followed by- I see no problem with this. This is beautiful. This is the beautiful, sun, sunny, sunshine state of Florida. By a long what? walk to work on the dirt road. And that's only one way. Also, everyone lives right near the dump. And that's just barely breaking even by maybe 10 or 20 dollars a month until of course the astronomical sanitation bill eats into our city's budget and causes the undesirable pile up of garbage in everyone's house it's really hard to keep track of what's even going on in this city since we're always panicking about the budget and barely surviving by just a few dollars and the city still had problems and expenses were still teetering on being too expensive I got rid of the crematorium because it was too expensive to burn the bodies. And I just started dumping the dead bodies into cemeteries, located right next to the dump on either side of town. We'd deal with all that later. Right now, the more pressing concern was that businesses wanted people that were smart, and everyone was dumb in town. No one had achieved more than an elementary literally florida oh my god dude. preschool education <laughs> I keep so when these commercial myself, enterprises but... were built unfortunately they were abandoned when the staff didn't know how to run the companies because they were too stupid still demand soared for zero percent residential tax this is like this is like <laughs> dude this is so good i love this video and i love i love how he just basically built like a texas florida uh merger Okay, and the issue is like, <laughs> I mean, this would be more Floridian if like everyone that went down there was like a crypto bro or just like interested in schemes. Denser housing projects. And we started just using martial law to demolish businesses right after they were built. If it looked like that they were going to aim to recruit people that were just too smart for our town. It's not morally dubious. It's for the common good. It was at this point in time that I learned how to double the ticket prices in all the amusement parks joining the residential and commercial sides of town, thereby nearly doubling our monthly tax income, as well as squeezing in a zoo at the end of the expensive transportation route. Now it cost $200 just to walk from one side of town to the other. Fortunately, this added a surprise surplus to our budget, allowing us to build a high school to educate our smooth-brained citizens. This then allowed us to reopen the office buildings and to end the ethically questionable and morally dubious practice of state-ordered demolitions on newly erected businesses to prevent gentrification. Finally, now our city wasn't even collecting the little wealth granted by the industrial zones, and it was a true 0% tax city at long last. And honestly, it wasn't all that far off from several hypothetical libertarian fantasies until the dead bodies started piling up and the garbage situation got out of hand. What to do? They couldn't be demolished by traditional means. That's not allowed. At this point in time, of all the tools at my disposal, only one seemed inviting and crazy enough to Sinkhole. work. Sinkhole. A meteor. No one would suspect that, that the state, I mean, that the catastrophic meteor of August 2024 was an inside job, a redirecting of a meteor, but it would take out the garbage and the dead bodies. You know, it doesn't interfere with the people who are alive. They don't have to pay tax. Just the dead people have to get hit by a meteor and it destroys all the garbage and probably sends it horribly out into the atmosphere. But I mean, it's free. So, you know, I did what I had to to make this city tax. The Florida version of this is not a meteor, but instead it's sinkholes. Tax free. Finally, I had achieved my goal. A questionably sustainable city with zero dollar tax that costs $400 to walk around in, but only if you decide to walk through part of it, which as it happens, most people have to, but they could just choose to stay home. And that's their decision. I believe I did a good job. You can compliment me down there in the compliment section of the video. Even if it took me five attempts, I believe I've made my point. Zero percent tax city achieved. Anyway, a big thanks to my patrons, <coughs> all of whom consensually Brilliant. choose to pay me.
pays 200 bucks every day to walk from one side of town to the other. Thank God there are no taxes in this free city. Taxation is theft and the right to choose to commute through a series of expensive yet barren amusement parks to survive is freedom. Yeah, I mean, I love that, like, everybody got the point. 